Today's event is a demo style showcasing the latest marketing tools for nonprofits. Our expert presenters will share apps that enable you to be more nimble, creative, and thrifty. Whether you're a seasoned marketing professional or new to the field, this event will provide valuable insights and practical advice for growing your nonprofit's impact. Don't miss us this opportunity to learn from the experts and take your marketing efforts to the next level. So before we get into the content, I want to welcome you to the TechSoup Global Network, especially for those of you who are new. At TechSoup, we believe that technology like smartphones, internet connectivity and training and more have the power to serve our communities better. And today's speakers with their Tech for Good app demos will give you a good taste of what this looks like in action. And with that, I'm going to welcome our six presenters today. We have Jordan Dene Ellis, Community Relationships Manager at Adobe. Jeremy Pearson, Regional Account Manager at Do Donor Perfect. Matthew Montoya, Senior Channel Marketing and Enablement Manager at Con Constant Contact. Michael Morella, Head of Customer Success at UserLike and Ava Taylor, Director of Social Impact at Hootsuite. So thank them all for being here with us today. So first up, we have Jordan. Jordan is an enthusiastic community manager based in Philadelphia. She's been an entrepreneur for over 12 years, building a pop culture inspired fashion brand, producing a geeky lifestyle magazine and helping fellow small businesses with the freelance social media service. Now she continues to support small business and brands with the team at Adobe Express. Adobe Express Premium is an online and mobile app for creating social graphics, videos, and more. Let's welcome Jordan. Hi, so excited to be here. So yeah, like you said, Adobe Express is Adobe's solution to quickly and easily creating standout content on mobile and web. And verified nonprofits get access to our premium for free, which is all of our premium assets and templates are over 200,000, or sorry, over 20,000 Adobe fonts and over 160 million stock photos, which if you don't have time to take your own photo shoots, access to great stock photos is huge. So let's dive right into the demo. I'll show a little bit of the homepage, how to find templates and use them, save your favorites, share with your team and schedule directly to social media. So this is the homepage. You can do all kinds of things from here, set up your brand, check out your old libraries, but I'm gonna to go to the search bar at the top and search nonprofits. So if I hit enter there, I'll find all of the nonprofit templates that we have available in Adobe Express. You can also like deep dive on the left. So I wanna click just Instagram posts because that's what I want. And I'm gonna choose this headshot volunteer of the week template along the right here. This feels like something I could use over and over. So I'll click start from this template and templates are super easy to remix. Like you just said, you can change the colors. You can swap out the photos. You can change the font, the text, the colors. Really easy, especially if you are not a pro designer like me. I did not go to art school. This is literally click and change. And then one of my favorite things you can do is at the bottom, you can duplicate a page which creates a copy in your project so that you can create multiple of the same thing. If you want to streamline your process, this is a volunteer of the week template. You wanna make the same image every week with new photos. You can just change out the name, change out the picture. And that's something you can do every single week to streamline your social media process right here. So now that I have the templates, I can also see all of them together. If I hit, yes, if I hit the, bo the button at the bottom, I can see my full layout of all of the projects within this one template. And if I want to share this with my team, I can hit the share button at the top right. If I hit the invite button, I can invite someone else to edit this project with me. So if I don't have the photos that I need or I want someone else's eye on it or want to let them edit the project too, I can just type in their email address and that's it. I can also make this into a template and save it into my libraries. If this is something that I wanna use over and don't wanna lose it, I can hit this make a template button also under the share in the top right. And that will save. I can save the name, add notes, save it to the library. I'm making this library nonprofit headshots. I can just hit save template. If I go back to the homepage and click the libraries over on the left, I'll see all of the libraries. This is going to open literally all of my libraries, but I'm going to go into the nonprofit headshots, which is what we're looking at today. 
So one of my favorite things that I can do in Adobe Express is save my favorite templates. So I don't know if anyone else has the like panic of having to create something from scratch. If you find templates as you're scrolling, you can save them into a library so that they're there when you want to create a new project. So if I need an annual report or I know I'm looking for volunteers, I can go through the templates I've already picked out for myself. But I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to click back into the project that I was already working on. And I'm going to schedule this directly to social media. So there's a schedule button at the top. I can click that. I can sync all of my social platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and TikTok is coming soon. So stay tuned. But here I can type in my caption. I can add a first comment of hashtags for Instagram. I can choose the time and date any amount of time in the future. And then if I hit the preview button, I can see what it will look like on all of the different social networks just to make sure nothing goofy is happening, nothing's cut off. And then I just hit the schedule button and that is it. I can see it in the calendar. I can move things around. I can unschedule or adjust to whatever I need. And that is my favorite workflow in Adobe Express super quickly. Like I said, Nonprofits worldwide can register for a free one year and renewable subscription to Adobe Express Premium. So you can head to adobe.com slash express slash nonprofits to find out more. Thank you, Jordan. Also, folks, if you are interested, you can go to the techsoup.org slash Adobe page on the website. And we have the product right there, too, for free. And Adobe Express is super easy. You have a bunch of different templates and I use some for my wedding. So it's all sorts of good stuff in there. So next up, we have Jeremy Pearson. Jeremy has been working with DonorPerfect for five years as a regional account manager for DonorPerfect. Jeremy has helped hundreds of nonprofits increase their fundraising and donor retention rates. He uses his experience in nonprofits, sales, and marketing to help organizations identify inefficiencies in their processes and shows them how DonorPerfect can help them streamline their fundraising activities and workflows to save time and raise more money. Donor Perfect Nonprofit CRM partners with your team to help you save time, raise money, and engage donors. As a hub for donor management and fundraising, you can build donor groups based on attributes that can help you better personalize all your messaging. Thanks for joining us today, Jeremy. Donor Perfect is the second largest nonprofit fundraising software worldwide. We have over 10,000 clients and 52,000 users. And one of the things that's unique about Donor Perfect is that we are a 100 percent employee owned company. We have over 35 years of experience and we view ourselves as your partner in fundraising success. Because we don't have any outside investors, our clients become our number one priority. We don't lock you into any contracts whatsoever. You can go month to month and cancel at any time with Donor Perfect. And uh, even with that setup, which is very unique in the nonprofit fundraising and CRM space, even with that setup, we have a 93 and a half percent retention rate for our clients. And the average lifespan of a client is 12 and a half years. So our success is based off of your success. We want you guys to stay forever. That's our goal as a company is to help our clients save time and raise more money. As we all know, fundraising is largely about building, cultivating, and stewarding relationships. But it can be hard as your organization grows to keep track of all the tools that you're using, all the data and interactions that you have with your team, or that your team has with your donors, your volunteers, prospective donors, all of that. So DonorPerfect centralizes that data. DonorPerfect becomes the central hub for all of your donor management and fundraising needs. So of course we have online donation forms for fundraising. We can track all the gift history of donors as well as helping with your thank you letters, the dreaded end of your tax receipt. All the reporting is built right in. Today, I wanna focus on how DonorPerfect makes it easy for nonprofits to keep track of all of your communication and interaction with your support. And so with DonorPerfect, you have the ability to engage with your supporters via text, video, email, and social media. You can also log any notes from phone calls or meetings that you have with donors right in DonorPerfect. So if you met with a major donor at Panera, you can use the DonorPerfect mobile app, talk to text, and enter the notes. And you can schedule phone calls for your colleagues. Just met with, have them call or have the executive director give them a follow-up call. Any personal emails that you send or receive can easily be logged in a donor's record by simply BCCing DonorPerfect. It truly is the central hub where you can see all on one screen all of the interaction that your organization has had with a particular donor. 
So to give just a couple of examples of how Darnell Perfect helps you manage communication, as you can see on the slide that's currently up, when you first log into Donor Perfect, you're going to see your to-do list for the day as a user. So you can click into these to-dos. You can see all the past interactions leading up to this call. And this is helpful so that you're aware if one of your colleagues recently spoke with a donor or if a donor has recently made a donation. On the next slide, you'll see that beyond being able to just easily communicate one-on-one -on -one with Chwintz, you can also communicate in bulk with specific segments of donors. So this could look like a text to all of the new donors in the last month. It could look like an email inviting all prospective major donors to register for your next event. And again, all of these interactions are automatically logged right within a donor's record in DonorPerfect. The last thing I'll mention on the next slide about DonorPerfect is that we have something called an open API. For those of you who are not tech savvy, like I'm not that tech savvy, that simply means that data from other tools can easily flow into DonorPerfect and also data from DonorPerfect can flow into other tools like QuickBooks, for example, for your accounting. So picture an API at the bridge that data can flow over. It helps you connect all of your different systems. But one example that I'll give as an example of how the API works is with Constant Contact. So I think Constant Contact is going next, but the integration that we have in this with Constant Contact is a two-way API, which simply means data can flow both from Donor Perfect to Constant Contact and from Constant Contact to Donor Perfect. So this makes it easy to create a segment in Donor Perfect, for example, of all the donors that gave a gift in the last six months between $100 and $500 or whatever you want. And then that segment will automatically flow into Constant Contact where you can engage that specific group of individuals. And of course, it's logged in each of their records that you sent them that email. You can even see in Donor Perfect if they're opening the emails that you're sending. So needless to say, we're just scratching the surface of all the ways that Donor Perfect can help save you time and raise more money. So if this seems like something that would work well for your organization, We'd love to get you connected with an account manager. They'll be able to learn more about your organization's specific problems and needs. They'll be able to do a more in-depth demo of all the ways that DonorPerfect can help solve those problems and meet those needs. So I think the slide deck's going to be provided. You guys can scan this QR code and get connected with an account manager. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Jeremy. Super useful. And I love being able to see visually how that integration would work in practice. Okay. Next up, we have Matthew Montoya, Senior Channel, Channel Marketing and Enablement Manager at Cost, Constant Contact. In this role, Matthew has helped over 14,000 small businesses and nonprofits better understand how digital marketing can affect growth and what utilizing best practices can mean to the bottom line. In his 21 years in marketing, he's worked on nearly every kind of marketing vehicle around from print, broadcast, social, web, and of course, email marketing. He's seen and had a role in it all. Preceding his time at Constant Contact, Matthew worked at a 501c3 nonprofit wearing multiple hats, including marketing, to help a nonprofit grow exponentially year over year. So today we're going to see how we can grow your nonprofit with Constant Contact's time-saving marketing tools. So save time and grow your nonprofit's presence with Constant Contact's digital marketing tool accessible from your office, whether that be your home office or on the go. And during this presentation, we'll demonstrate how easy and quick it is to personalize and automate your communications to remain top of mind, increase donations, and encourage volunteer engagement. Thanks for joining us today, Matthew. Thank you. In that introduction, we talked about how Constant Contact has been in business, or we've been in business for 26 years. I've been doing this for Constant Contact for 12 years. And there's a few things we've learned about nonprofits. It may not be all of you, but I have a feeling it's most of you. We know that nonprofits are often working with a small staff. They're often overworked because they have a small staff. And because of that, every second saved is valuable. So how do I know that about nonprofits? One more slide. Because I've been there. I have lived your life. I have worn multiple hats. When I worked at that nonprofit, we were a staff of two. I was often working well after five and on the weekends, doing everything from handling reception to doing marketing and more. So I know what it's like to live in your world. And hopefully the tips I'm going to share with you today will save you some time and make you more efficient. So here's the three things we're going to talk about, but I want to briefly stop on this slide and talk about everything you see here, because this is all that Constant Contact has to offer. We've been in business for 26 years. We invented the email marketing space, but there's a bit of a challenge there because email marketing is mostly all people know about us. But because we have limited time, 
We're going to talk about email, ironically. We're going to talk about social and how you can share your email easily to social, saving you time. And we'll talk about email automation. So firstly, we have a small staff. I should be treating my donors, potential donors, vendors, members, volunteers with different information. But I'm all by myself. How can I do it? There's a couple of different forms of automation. And Jeremy gave me a fantastic tee up. We adore Donor Perfect and Donor Perfect customers. He gave me a perfect tee up because Donor Perfect really great at segmenting data. And then you can take that data and segment it even further because when people take action in your email, they're telling you something. They're telling you what you're, they're interested in. They're telling you what their passions are. Because they're taking action in your email, every single time that they click an email, click on a link in an email, they're telling you something about it. So this particular feature, when you're building an email in Constant Contact and you're linking it to a page, you have the ability to toggle on that click segmentation feature. And what that does is it allows anybody who clicks on a link to be segmented automatically into a new or existing list. The benefit there is for follow-up. You can actually have that group of people based on the subject matter they clicked on grouped together so that you can do follow-up about that particular subject matter. But let's take it a step further and let's talk about some advanced segmentation. So with our segmentation functionality, you can take a couple of different forms of data, carve them up and have living lists. So the, basically what you do is when you go into our segmentation tool, you first decide, okay, what is it I want to segment? In case you're unfamiliar with this whole segmentation idea, it's basically just taking groups of people and breaking them down into smaller, more finite groups. Because I'm often asked, because I've been doing this so long, what's the number one tip you'd share, Matt? And I'll say, when it comes to email marketing, it's relevancy. You want to make sure that your email marketing is as relevant as possible. And this is the way you do that. So in this example, maybe I'm going to choose first the contact activity. I want to see, are these people regularly opening or clicking on links in my email? Or maybe I want to look at people that haven't regularly opened or clicked on links in my email. Second is maybe I want to drill down and I want to look at a particular zip code. I want to look at a particular contact detail, like their job title or the city they live in. And lastly, maybe I want to look on a specific list and pull that together. Next. And as I said, this is like a living list because most people, if they use constant contact, they're used to sending to lists. But with segments, because you're pulling in this data, as that data comes in, as somebody meets the threshold you built, you can send to segments. And thanks to integrations and partners like Donor Perfect, as data comes in from that API that he mentioned, that data can be carved up live for you. So they're meeting the criteria that you preset. I'm starved for time. I know how important it is to foster relationships, but I wear too many hats. Next, we're going to talk about our social functionality. So this is often overlooked in constant contact. And what this will allow you to do is share your email either automatically or tailor it through our social media suite to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. First, you just sync up your accounts. Second, you put in your message and the link for your email is already generated there. Third, you decide whether you want to use the imagery from your email or you want to choose a different image. Next, you're going to decide, okay, do I want to have variations across different social media platforms? And then I either decide to send this social media post now or schedule it up to a year in advance. Next. I know the time is money. I have a small staff. What can I do? Next. Automation. So the real power is to take that segment, that segmented list that I talked about earlier and tie it into automation or take behavior based in your emails people are clicking on or doing and automatically send a, an email follow-up or a series of email. We have three different kinds of automation. Welcome emails when somebody joins a list, date triggered automation, and then behavioral automation when somebody takes an action. Next. So to set up, I'm using click segment or click automation. So in this example, first I'm deciding, hey, when somebody clicks on a specific link in an email, I want to send number two. So that's number two. I want to send this email. Then I'm going to decide how long I want to delay the next email. Then I choose another email and I continue until I have a complete series built. Do you have to send a lot of emails? No, you can just send one, but this is a fantastic way to save you time. Now I'm going to give you a sneak peek in the future really quickly. Our automation suite is about to be incredibly grown up. So we are going to be moving into journey-based automation. You're seeing an example of this. You're one of the very first to see this. This is rolling out next month. And in this example, I actually have a variety of different things. So I'm choosing the trigger, what I want the email to trigger off to. Then I'm choosing a path. Do they have SMS? Yes, then I'm going to send them a text. Don't they have SMS? Maybe I'm going to, or don't they employ SMS? No, I'm going to send them an email. Look, I look forward to doing some more education around this really soon. And as was mentioned, we have hundreds and hundreds of fantastic tools to help you, tools you're likely already using. And I want to call out Donor Perfect because, again, they are a fantastic partner. And the integration between Donor Perfect and Constant Contact is fantastic. So, just like earlier, 
scan the QR code. And on top of that, Constant Contact's going to throw 50% discount on Constant Contact for you for the lifetime of your subscription. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. It was really great to see how deep you can go into with the segmentation. It like really brings that to life. Next up, we have Michael Morella, Head of Customer Success at UserLike. Michael's background is in IT support. He has been working with UserLike for nearly seven years, and his primary focus is improving the customer experience. So we'll be looking at the UserLike Message Center. Many nonprofits are still focusing on offering old school support over the phone and email, while most people are now communicating over messaging apps and social media. UserLike's Message Center can help your nonprofit transition to these popular channels, enabling you to meet your supporters where they're already communicating. Thanks for joining us. Let's get straight to the subject matter to our problem. And what we see our problem is that customer communication, as you've already said, is very different than it used to be. So many businesses and organizations are relying on these old forms of communication, such as phone and email, both of which are very time consuming and take your full attention. And another thing we worry about in this current time, I think we can all relate, is that companies need to find ways to save costs, make more money, and also build relationships and keep those customers. So let's move on to the next slide where we have our solution. So what we find our solution being is simply user-like. So it's a leading all-in-one customer messaging, messaging solution that supports digital transformation. And then also allows customers to, our businesses to build long-term relationships with their customers, whatever, whatever channel the customers choose. We do offer the best channels to start the conversation and we want you to stay in touch. So no matter if your customers start on your website or in a messaging app like Facebook, WhatsApp, or SMS, you can always manage these conversations in our message center. We also have other powerful chat tools for digital support that help eliminate the trade-off between service quality and calls. Next, I'm going to break down the solution into a few key areas. We can, oh, we're already there. I noticed that. Okay. We allow you to bring modern messaging to your website and you can support your customers from the first chat and throughout the entire website experience. This means they can navigate your entire website and you'll always be in touch. To add the messenger, it's pretty simple. You just have to add an HTML snippet to your website's code and get going. You can adjust the messenger's design and reflect your own brand style, of course. And then you can seamlessly switch between live chats and asynchronous messaging. This is similar to what you might experience with Facebook and WhatsApp. Your customers can reach out at any time and you can be sure they'll be notified whenever you choose to respond or are able to respond. So the messaging channels that we offer, these are already tools that the customers are using every single day. So you can allow your website visitors to choose the channel that's most convenient for them. This can be directly in the messaging app itself, or they can start from your channel on your website and then switch to the channel they prefer. So they could be chatting on website at one minute, but they say, you know what? I'm actually going to want to get followed up with on WhatsApp today. So basically, UserLike is the business layer on top of these apps. So UserLike offers professional support and sales features such as routing, assignment, status, and topic tagging, of course, but also notes, live translation, analytics, and even more than that. Let's move on. So in our message center, where you'll actually be doing the communication, this is your inbox for all interactions. So no matter which channel your customers use, you'll be getting all the messages and then you can respond to them for professional support and sales. And you can re-engage the customers once you have their contact data. Customer data, such as their email addresses provided, as well as their location, the pages they've been on and any related conversations. So you can always provide personalized support to the customers. Yes, thank you. Despite what I've been saying, sometimes calls are still useful. So you can easily switch from chat to video call at any time. And we also have screen sharing available in case you need to get a little more in depth with the customer. So the calls are directly integrated into the chat, unifying all these communications into one place. This is a lot, this allows you to showcase your products and build these closer relationships that we want right now. So we also offer some additional services such as onboarding workshops, chat setup, and more. We want to make the onboarding process simple for you. And we have a few extras available. So to provide the ultimate value for your individual case, we have training and other projects available to you. 
Additional user-like products are also available, such as our AI automation hub and lets you create AI-powered chatbots, a smart FAQ, and interactive contact forms. To get started with your user-like, it's pretty easy. And I encourage you all to get started with a free trial at userlike.com. And when you're ready, all you have to do is head over to TechSoup's website, sign up for a plan with UserLike, set up your UserLike account, and start chatting. If you have any further questions for me or my team, you can reach out to us via our chat button on our website or via support at userlike.com. We're always glad to help. And lastly, I'd like to wish you all happy chatting. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Michael. I love the flexibility and the different options that user provides. I know that for me, it's always easier to try and just text whenever I'm working on a support ticket. Exactly. So next up, we have Ava Taylor, Director of Social Impact at Hootsuite. Ava has over 12 years of experience creating and executing strategic programs and campaigns that connect and engage brands and employees with their customers, communities, and other stakeholders. In her role as Director of Social Impact, AVA creates initiatives to empower its employees to give back to the communities where we live and work, including the award-winning Hootsuite for Good program. AVA also works closely with nonprofit organizations to harness the power of social good. So today we'll see how you can market your mission on social media with Hootsuite. Social media plays a critical role in helping nonprofit organizations provide accessible information, deliver help when it's needed, and inspire people to take action on the causes they care about. However, we don't always know if our social media efforts are giving us the results that we need. So during this five minute demo, we'll be focused on performance and how to get the most out of your social media efforts using the best time to publish feature, sentiment reporting, and report scheduling. Thanks for joining us today, Ava. Thank you so much for having me. It's lovely to see everyone here and so engaged in the conversation as well. So yeah, we, as mentioned, I work for Hootsuite and we are the global leading social media management platform. So as many of us are on many platforms, this really is the one tool you need to bring everything together into one place. We do have several programs that fall under social impact at Hootsuite being a global company. The one I do want to focus on today is specifically our Hoot Giving program, which is specifically designed for nonprofits such as yours. And through this Hoot Giving program, it gives nonprofits up to 75% off our team and pro plans, which is our dashboards and our tools. We also have an incredible database of education. So a lot of certifications and courses to help you have that leading edge in social media. It's a very complex, changing landscape. We we can see things happening all the time on the different networks and, and our academy is proud to be updating their content regularly to keep up with the changes. So we do encourage nonprofits to reach out and request a discount, which can be found on our website. And we're used by thousands of nonprofits now, and I'm going to show you just a few of the features as to why we are here to help and how we're helping. I think what's really important to consider is that in multiple reports, we see email and social media remaining the top two ways that donors worldwide are inspired to give by. So we really can't afford to not be on social and you can't afford to not keep building that email list and then bring those together as we've seen in so many of the tools today in our different demos. So from a problem perspective, we know that social media is quite critical in helping organizations of all kinds, including nonprofits, getting incredible important information out at the right time to the right people and inspiring those people to take action. We've had a number of nonprofits recently just reach out and just express how helpful it's been to have a dashboard like Hootsuite where they can bring in their volunteers in times of crisis, like a hurricane hits and life-saving information needs to get out to the right people and the right channels. And that's what we're here to help with. As mentioned in many of the other presentations, we all face limited time challenges, resources, competing priorities. And so I want to talk a bit about how we can help with those particular challenges. On the next slide. So these are just a few of the ways that we hear nonprofits really valuing the tool that we have. And from a dashboard perspective, the way that you can co coordinate your communications and get the information out to the right people, build those communities. We're really focused on first and foremost, freeing up time for your team. And your team could be a team of one. It could be a few people with different hats on. It could be volunteers. Our level of permissions make it really easy to have that security that you might need as an organization. And then we really want to help simplify those tasks and make it super easy to get content inspiration, figure out what's working best, repurpose content, and connect to all the apps that you might already be using, whether it's image editing, for example, e-commerce compliance, et cetera. We have an enormous ecosystem to make it like just a click away. And then you can also take it on the go, on the go with mobile apps. And Academy, as mentioned, is just how do you build up those skills? How do you add value for the volunteers that you have? How do they contribute to your strategy and help you be 
even more effective and quick with your time. So in a quick demo, one of the features I love talking about that's actually really simple and maybe overlooked is the best time to publish. So one thing you don't want to do is spend a lot of time figuring out what day am I going to send this out, what time of day and for networks. So this is a tool that we have under analytics. So on the left hand side, you can see the numbered order there. But if you click into best time to publish and you pick the network that you want to focus on, you actually have your choice of goals, as you can see under the four. If you want to extend reach and capture attention, we're going to show you which times of day you should post when your audience is online and interacting. And it's also set to the time zones that you're based in, based on your account. If you wanted to build awareness, you can choose that objective to get more eyes on your content at the right times. And that heat map's going to change and adjust to that particular goal. Increasing engagement is helpful if you're focused on building an engaged community. And if you have Facebook as well, you can actually select increased traffic and revenue, and you can use those links in your post to drive those alternate organizational goals that you might have. On the next page, you have the ability to, when with the time shown, click one click to say schedule for this time. And our compost is going to fill in all the details for you for that network, that time and day. And then it's just literally creating the content, putting in your copy, creating the link. We have integrations right in our composer for things like Canva and Grammarly just to make it super simple. And then you can hit schedule. On the next slide, I do want to quickly show we also have quite a new tab called content inspiration. And this is cool because depending on the type of content that you want to, the category, you can then just pick that theme and it's really quick and easy to adapt as a template. And with social media in general, I think regardless of the type of industry that you're in, emotion and the way that people feel about your content, the value you add is really what will help set you apart. So do you teach people something? Do you make them feel something? It could be humor. It could be more of a sad kind of thing. It could be the fear of missing out. Like these emotions are really powerful when it comes to storytelling on social media, which is absolutely critical to engaging people and having them take notice of your content. So if you're spending the time to put it out there, we do want to make sure that you're hitting the best kinds of emotions and getting the kinds of reactions that you want from people. So for example, if we were to pick the one highlighted here, introduce an employee and we go to the next slide, or I might've actually said, congratulate community member here. You can pick an example piece of content from us and then you can just tweak it for your organization. It's really simple and easy to do that. And then you can schedule across your channels and you can get a visual representation of your calendar, drag things around and adjust. And it's just really simple. So. Those are just a two of the features that I know are helpful in terms of saving time. There's so much more around analytics and automation I'd love to get into, but it's just, there's too much to share in a short period of time, as I'm sure we're all feeling today. And I hope that was helpful. We would love to help your organization with social. Please do check out our website to find out more information about our Hoot Giving program or reach out to me anytime if you have questions. And then my sneak tip is if you ever reach out to Hootsuite on social at Hootsuite, for example, on Twitter and Instagram. The social team is looking at every single message. It's a shortcut if you want to skip the support team and get advice. So they won't. That's the secret tip I like to give out in just these kinds of sessions. With us. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ava. I loved seeing that grid to maximize your content that you're putting out and you have the toggle between engagement or new followers or anything. So I think that's a really cool feature. Okay, so let me go ahead and take a look at some of the questions that we received. So we received one already and it was answered in chat, but I feel like it's really valuable to be able to answer it out loud. So Andrew asks for donor perfect for Jeremy. What size organization is the solution ideal for? Is it helpful for a very small nonprofit looking around five to 10 volunteers? Yeah, that's that's a great question. The answer that I put in chat, if you read it, cool. If you haven't read it, simple answer is yes, Donor Perfect is great for small nonprofits like five to 10 volunteers. We have clients with a couple hundred records. We have clients with hundreds of thousands of records. So we have over 10,000. So obviously there's a wide gamut of what we have. Many of our clients, the vast majority of our new, or not the majority, like 34, 40% or so of our new clients start with about 500 records, under 1,000, under 500, many of them. So many people start small, and the system is built to be intuitive and easy to use for the smallest nonprofit. Don't have any full-time staff. I have these conversations every day. So it's built to be easy to use for those volunteer-based nonprofits, but the system is built to grow with you as you grow. So did that, hopefully, Andrew, that helps, and Bailey, hopefully that addresses that question. Yes. Thank you, Jeremy. The next question that I wanted to pull out is for Michael at user. How difficult is it to set up user? 
at all, honestly. Surely you could hop in first day. We had people starting new hires. It doesn't matter which department they're in. And one of the first things we asked them to do is add user like to a website. Typically that's something like Squarespace. So very simple already, but I would say you could be up and running, setting up every, everything that you need to get started and then adding it to website within five minutes or so. Great. Thank you, Michael. Let's see. Let's pull out a question for Jordan for Adobe Express. There's several, so I'm going to pull one. This is actually a really good option. Does Adobe Express offer any templates in Spanish or have the option to change language to Spanish? Primary audience are Spanish speakers. Yeah, there are templates for all over the globe. So there's Japanese, German, French, Spanish, depending on where you are and how your settings are set up. So you, yeah, you could obviously take any template and remix it in a way you want, but there are default templates in all kinds of languages. Thank you. Really valuable. Let's see. So there's several questions in here also for Ava. I saw this come in when you were doing your presentation, Ava, and maybe this is something that others may be able to chime in on. David asked, could you use chat GPT to write your content? And the reason why I'm choosing this is because I feel like I've seen chat GPT come up so much this week. So I know that it came up during Ava's presentation, so I'll let her answer first. But then if anyone else wants to jump in, I'll open up the floor to everyone else. I don't think I mentioned chat GTP, it, GPT in mine, but in terms of on that topic, I'd like a content development. You could, I would never not review it. The It's one of those things that if you feel like it generates content that represents your organization and your voice, or your objectives, then you could test it out. And against others, I think the important thing is to be mindful about what you're putting out and what your objectives are. So if your objective is to acquire more emails or drive donations or find volunteers, then having a bit more of an intentional plan to say, okay, if I post this here and this here, what performs best? Ultimately, that's how you're going to learn where what's most effective for you and what saves you the most time. I think if you were to just put it out there and not really have a plan for it, you're not going to know if it's achieving the goals that you're trying to achieve on social. That's always my um, advice to everyone is to be quite intentional about why you're using social media. It will help you narrow down where you spend your time and what works for you. So yeah, you could, but I wouldn't, it's a bit like anything you put out on social should always be checked in on and see if there's what kind of engagement and responses it might be triggering for your audience. So that's my thoughts. I'd love to hear from someone else in the group. Yeah, I'll chime in really quickly. A spirit of sharing a little bit of future state of constant contact. So let me actually define, since some people may not know what chat GPT is, it's basically an AI powered content generator. It's actually pretty cool. I do have to agree that when you're generating content automatically, you definitely want to review and make sure it's on point. But contact's actually going to be introducing in this first half of the year, a, the ability for you to put in just a few notes about what you want in a text, and it'll actually generate a text for you that then you can review, make sure that it's on point, send out. And then we're going to be offering it for email. For instance, you say there are three topics of your email is going to be donations. It's going to be giving Tuesday, and it's going to be around animal shelters. It'll actually generate paragraphs of text for you. You can then go in and edit to tailor exactly to you. But we're doing that because one thing that our customers have continuously said is I get the power of email marketing. I get it. it I see results, but I just, I'm starved for time, especially in the nonprofit space. And I just don't know how to write something like I need help with content. And so we'll be rolling that out pretty soon. So keep your eyes open. Thank you, Matthew. And since you're off of mute, we had another question that I know was already answered in chat, but I think there's value of just saying it out loud. Shan had asked, does this 60% off offer exist for existing users or just new users? Yes, it does. What you'd need to do is first make sure you pay the app fee through TechSoup because that's what's going to qualify you for the discount. Once you do that, I'm going to put a message into the chat for everybody. Reach out to our support team. You know, you're going to need to make sure you do that step with TechSoup first because we're going to check with TechSoup, make sure you've done that. And then contact our support team and they'll be able to put you under the TechSoup discount. Great. Thank you so much. I think that this is one that I'll open up to the floor because I think that this is really pertinent to a lot of folks. Lee asks, what KPIs should we be thinking about as we start and develop our communications platforms? So I will give everyone a little bit of time to think about that. And then we'll see. Is there someone that wants to go first? Otherwise, I can just call on someone. 
Michael, <laughs> you <laughs> looks like you've had a thought yeah, moment there. It's definitely a thought. We we do have analytics available and a wide variety of customers. So it depends on what you're doing and which KPIs you find the most valuable, of course. So some people care about page visit, visits and what where are my customers at and what are they seeing or what they what are they most interested in for me and my team obviously this should be more support generated how is my team doing what is what are our response times what's the satisfaction rating so there's a lot of different things you can go off of some people care like what is your availability and where are you missing opportunities so there's a lot of different things you could look at depending on if you're more trying to build revenue versus if you're trying to support people. Thank you, Michael. Matthew? I'll jump in. Yeah. Constant contact. I'll tee off of Michael just a bit. It really depends on the goal of your campaign. Constant contact reports on how many people visit a landing page, how many of those people convert into leads and allow you to become, choose to become subscribers of yours. But I want to talk in, in specifics to the most valuable KPI when it comes to email marketing. And in my experience, a lot of people, a lot of people, and especially in nonprofits, unfortunately, pay attention to the vanity KPI, which is open rate. And I have to say that is not what you want to pay attention to. People generally pay attention to the open rate, meaning how many people open the email versus how many you send it to, because it's a big number, right? If you look at two numbers, open rate and click rate, just the reason why it's called a vanity number is because it makes us feel good. Oh, 60% of my audience opened my email. It doesn't matter because it doesn't prove that they actually read the email. And in fact, a tool like a preview in Gmail or something like that, that can count as an open. And in September of 2021, Apple threw everything upside down anyway, because Apple automatically, for lack of a better word, and oversimplifies it, opens every email. Even if you're just using Gmail on an Apple device, it's going to count as an open. It's part of their security settings. And so you cannot take open rate as the end all be all metric. The end all be all metric is the click rate. How many people that quote unquote open the email actually clicked on links? That number is going to be smaller. It's just, it's the way that works. But what click rate proves is that the email was delivered. It was opened. It was read and specifically what they read. And that kind of dovetails back to what I was talking to you about with segmentation and how I dovetailed that in my, my Jeremy's presentation. Knowing what people read is critical. Knowing what specifically they read is where more donations live. It's where future volunteers live. Because if you learn more about your subscribers and you break them up into those smaller segments, you can then send relevant content. And that relevant content can be not just the email, but it tell you something about, oh, we need to put some more stuff on our website about this, or we need to post through Hootsuite some fantastic social media content. Hope that helped. Thank you. Does anyone else have any thoughts about KPIs or where to start when thinking about developing KPIs? My only quick thought is, like everyone has said, think about your goals. So a lot of KPIs can also be like vanity metrics, especially in social media land and even email, like the size of your email list. But just think about what's actually doing something for you because sometimes those bigger numbers aren't turning into like your organization goals. So that's my only two cents. Thank you. Ava? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's a bit like I mentioned in my presentation, we're trying to build out the tools that help you identify the goals that you're specifically focused on, because it's a bit like one of the questions was, how does something like Hootsuite compared to just being able to publish to social through GoDaddy, for example? And it's sure you can publish it on GoDaddy, but it doesn't mean it's you have the information you need to determine if it's a good use of your time. That's probably the most important part. I think with any nonprofit or organization, you just want to spend your time where it makes the most difference for your, the customers, the clients that you're serving as a nonprofit. Like the work that nonprofits do with it's often like life-saving critical information to improving someone's quality of life or health or knowledge or access. And you just don't have time to waste. So we don't hate for just posting for the sake of posting for that reason. It's being intentional about where your audience is, what kind of information they're looking for, and then what kind of formats work best for them. And it's definitely often a combination of things like email and website and blog and social. And how do you bring them all together? If you know that, let's say your most critical short-term goal is we need volunteers, then that should drive your social media strategy and your email strategy and how you create that presence across multiple channels to find the right people. Um, and tools like ours are designed to help you quickly understand where and when to post at the best time, what kind of content format works well, and give you the confidence to do it and really easy data to work with that you can share automated with teams, make quick decisions, keep moving forward and keep learning. The failing fast is such a valuable technique on social media in particular because it's unique from email in its way that it's a two-way communication channel and email is one way typically. So 
that's where you can gather quite a lot of insight w- quickly as to what works well in the beginning. And then. Thank you, Alva. <clears throat> and then Jan asked a question that Michael wants to answer live. What does KPI stand for? It's actually the reason I did that. Is actually, it really does resonate because oftentimes we're also speaking to people in the industry and we sometimes forget that these could be just people wanting to get started somewhere that are mom and pop shops, for example. So basically all it is, it stands for key performance indicator. And the simplest way to explain it, as with the analytics I mentioned, if you wanted to achieve a goal or certain, certain things want to be reached, or you have a measurement that you want to stick to, we have a standard. I could say, for example, I want to see how many chats I had in a day or how many I have in a week. So then I could look at that over a day for hour. I could look that over an entire month and then I can measure that. And then prepare based on that information, for example. Thank you for that. Okay, so I'm going to do one more question and then just close out here. And it was just something that wasn't mentioned, but I think, again, there's value of saying it out loud. Jeremy, Brittany had asked, does Donor Perfect have an event registration in addition to donor management feature? Yeah, the answer is yes, we have that as well. The big thing that I started out by saying, I know today we're focusing largely on communication tools and centralizing all that communication. With Donor Perfect, because it helps you manage all of your fundraising and all of your donor management, we have not just a place to centralize these communications, but all of these forms to put on your website. If somebody, of course, wants to join your mailing list, register for an event, become a volunteer, they can fill out these forms. That data flows right into Donor Perfect. So we've got event registration pages. You can set up the website if you're running an auction event. You can track in kind donations for auctions to just manage, again, all of the fundraising efforts of your nonprofit. So yeah, events, of course, is a big part of that. Grant management, individual donations, major donations, building a recurring donor program. That's all a part of what's included with Donor Perfect. Thanks, Jeremy. And I think that brings up a really great point is that we only spent a small amount of time today with each of these applications. And each of these applications are really rich. There's so many different features and just different things of value that they can bring your nonprofit. So there are so many trials or discounts that were mentioned. So please, once we share out the recording and the slides, take some time to look through everything and see what your nonprofit needs to help with communications. There's a lot of value. Okay. So we already did this, shared everything in chat. If you enjoyed this presentation today and you'd like to be a sponsor in the future, please contact Susan Tinby at community at techsoup.org. Thank you again, especially to the behind the scenes producers and staff at TechSoup who made this event possible. Thank you again for all of the speakers today.